Okay, we're back, and for this one, I just want to get into some of the, the basics of um, a, a special type of circular motion for satellites. Okay, so satellites are, are technically projectiles um, that you can put into orbit around some larger object. Um, obviously, we, we have hundreds, to, if not thousands, of satellites going around the Earth right now, or at least pieces of debris as well. Um, at all different heights and altitudes above the surface of the Earth. Uh, in our case, we have to make sure we have satellites outside of the atmosphere, so they have to be about 150, 200 miles up um, before they get outside the atmosphere and get rid, rid of the air friction. Um, we ourselves are actually satellites of the Sun because we're bound by gravity and we, we go in this more or less circular orbit. Technically it's elliptical, but pretty close to a circle for us um, around the Sun. Okay, so consider what projectile motion is again. Okay, the, the key to projectile motion is that you have two motions at the same time. You're moving sideways, like if, if you were to throw something or roll something off a tabletop, you have that horizontal motion where you have a constant speed, but then in, in a different dimension, um, going towards the Earth vertically, you have a, a force, you have gravity, and so you have a constant vertical acceleration. It's that combination of, of a constant velocity that's perpendicular to a constant acceleration that gives you that arch, that gives you, a pro, you know, what we consider to be a projectile. Um, keep in mind that, again, if we're ignoring air friction, um, if gravity is the only thing that's making you accelerate, you know, towards the Earth, let's say, then we call that free fall. So satellites around the Earth are actually all free falling. The Earth's gravity is trying to pull them down, but we also give them some velocity that's perpendicular to that. So to get some sense of this, uh, I'm just going to play a, a pretty short um, video. Take advantage of, of a different video here. <laughs> hey everybody, it's me, Ben. So today's question is, how do satellites orbit the Earth? You'll see we're using this prop globe that we use for everything. But uh, let's pretend there's a satellite around it. Satellites are, to some degree, mysterious objects, right? Orbital mechanics can also be mysterious because there's no easy way for us to experience orbital mechanics personally. However, with a little bit of imagination, we can understand the idea behind orbital mechanics very easily. So imagine what happens if you throw a ball. And it goes 100 feet or so, and then it hits the ground. That ball is actually orbiting. It's just that the ball's orbit is very, very, very short. So let's say the ball doesn't do it. You're like, Ben, I got this rifle. I'm going to shoot that. So you grab a rifle, you shoot it, and you fire it straight and level. That bullet might travel a mile before succumbing to gravity and hitting the ground. So let's imagine another thing. Right? We're just imagining stuff. Let's say you had a very large, powerful cannon, and it's able to give its shell an extremely high initial velocity. So you're shooting this cannon straight and level, and the shell's going to go many miles, far enough to actually follow the curve of the Earth for a period of time before it hits the ground. So one thing that gums up these examples is air resistance. Like, imagine if we took this powerful cannon to the moon, right? Because where else would we take our imaginary cannon? And we mounted it on top of the biggest moon mountain. Well, the moon has no real atmosphere. It's completely surrounded by the vacuum of space. If we adjust the speed of this cannon shell just right and shoot it perfectly, then the shell would follow the curve of the moon exactly. It would fall at exactly the same rate that the curve of the moon falls away from it. So it would keep falling, but it would never actually hit the ground. In fact, eventually, it would curve all the way around and boom, they have right back into the back of the cannon. Now on the moon, you can actually have satellites in extremely low orbit like that, just a few miles off the ground to avoid the mountains. On Earth, though, it's not so easy because satellites have to get above the atmosphere and into the vacuum of space to orbit for any length of time. So 200 miles up is about the minimum that we'll need to avoid atmospheric interference. Let's take the Hubble Space Telescope, right? That's a popular one. The Hubble Space Telescope orbits at an altitude of about 380 miles, but the principle here is exactly the same. The speed of the satellite is adjusted so that it falls to Earth at exactly the same rate that the curve of the Earth falls away from the satellite. To put it 
the most simplistic terms. It is perpetually falling, and it's just never managing to hit the ground. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, we appreciate it. And... Okay, so that's the idea that satellites fall all the time because gravity is always acting on them. Uh, it's just that they're moving fast enough forward so that as they fall and, and they go into that curve that we see projectiles do, it misses the Earth because the Earth is round and the Earth is also curving below it. So they mentioned um, some pretty good speeds. You know, the, these satellites, when they're up there, um, are traveling at, at thousands of meters per second. Okay, that's at magic speed so that as they move forward and fall, the Earth is also curving below it, so it never actually hits. Uh, this is just for the simplest case. If you if you could fine tune it so you get a, a circular, like a perfect circular orbit going around the Earth, um, we know something about circular motion. And every time we do a circular motion problem, we start with exactly the same thing, mv squared over r. Okay, that stands for the net centripetal force acting on the object. Now in this case, the, the radius of the circle that the satellite follows is the combination of the radius of the Earth, if, if we're doing this for an Earth satellite, plus whatever height you are above the surface of the Earth. Okay, that's the full radius of, of that circle. And on the right-hand side of this, um, we have to write down whatever the actual force is acting on the satellite. Well, when you're in space, the only thing that, that does act on you is the force of gravity between you and, and the Earth itself. Newton's law of gravity is that gravitational constant, the famous big G number. We have the mass of the Earth, and then we have whatever the mass of the satellite is that you put up there. And that's divided by the distance squared between the centers of the satellite and the Earth. So that would be the same distance, the radius of the Earth plus the height of the satellite. That's the total distance between the centers. And we have to square that. We can simplify this a little bit, and if we solve for that speed, for the v, notice that the, the mass of the satellite actually drops out. Okay, it's on both sides. That distance is in our denominator on both sides, so one of those drops out. What we're left with is our gravitational constant, the mass of the Earth, and the distance between the two the two centers at least, the radius of the Earth plus the height above the surface. And then we have to square root that. This is known as orbital speed, or the orbital velocity. Notice that for a given height, there's only one speed that you'd have to get that satellite going at um, to get into that circular orbit. Any other speed, too fast or too slow, it's going to leave that orbit and actually become uh, an elliptical orbit. Okay. Notice also that it's an inverse relationship between the height above the Earth and the speed that you need to be in a circular orbit. So in other words, as you go higher above the Earth, a bigger radius, um, that would mean that you actually need a slower orbital speed. So, so satellites far away from the Earth are moving more slowly to keep their orbits than satellites that are closer to the Earth. Closer satellites go faster. Okay, so that, that's the, the very basics that we have here of, of this type of satellite motion. Um, remember, they're falling towards the Earth. They're always in free fall. That's why astronauts seem to be weightless, because everything, the spacecraft and the astronauts, everything is falling. That's why they seem to float. It's not because there's no gravity. There's a lot of gravity. Gravity keeps them in orbit in the first place. It's just that they're free-falling. The key is that you have a speed going fast enough forward to make it into a projectile so that as you curve, you're matching the curvature of the Earth as you fall. And it takes this special speed here in order to do that and maintain that, that circular orbit. So I hope this helps. And until next time, We'll see you later.